Legends Carrick is the new Dragon Ball Super Card Game World Champion. And I had a blast asking him some questions about the deck he played and his experience at the Battle Hour. I did something very similar with Phil Tarpini, who he actually happened to play at Worlds. And basically what I do is I list a few questions out and try to pick the brain of the new world champion and see where their mind is at, why they play certain decks. So I won't hold you guys up. Let's get to it. Hi, I'm Legends Michael Carrick, the current world champion for the DBS TCG, and I will be answering five questions for Evan U7. Why did I choose to play Android 21? Well, uh, I guess that's a good story. So, um, all year, Android 21, and ever since that deck has was created, actually, uh, Android 21, Nature of Evil, is the one deck I never want to sit down across. Uh, regardless of whether the player is a known uh, player or whether they're, they're experienced on it or not, I think that deck is just the most irritating and, and threatening deck to sit across from, right? Because you have to play so differently to really beat that deck and to, to starve that deck of resources. And so uh, I was talking to my friend. I was like, well, what if we just take a good player and we just master the deck, right? Like, could you, like, if we're afraid of this deck, what if we just master the deck ourselves? Then it's probably even more deadly. So that was the thought process we had going into it. Little did we know that the deck was actually favored into U7, favored obviously into uh, all the other blue decks, and actually had a pretty slight edge into Green Gohan. Um, it, and most of it has to do with the SCR, admittedly, an SCR that can wipe out a unison uh, regardless of specified cost, and then grant two attacks to push damage in and then heal you like it this seo does a lot for the deck right and and the deck's the best deck out there to abuse it and it's really because of pan right so um so w once we really ironed all those like pieces out and we started testing into the meta it quickly became apparent that android 21 just didn't have a bad matchup that was not in the color red right like yeah black petrification was kind of annoying because it could hit your eight drop but you could play around that uh, by by attacking with oobs first, right? Uh, so they they either have to petrify the oob or they just never counter. And then if they just never counter and you still have the energy up for the eight drop, like you just don't play the eight drop and they just took a lot of free damage or they lost a lot of hand count. Like uh, little things like that really change the deck. And uh, and it's it's access to like to guaranteed ramp is pretty cool too. Like obviously you can counter play like the two drop and the four drop, but but it's pretty consistent in doing what it does. It has great bombs. It's got a really accessible SCR, and it it it's really hard to read the play lines of the deck, because like you 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 think you're only giving Android 21 two energy or one energy to play with uh, for their next turn, but then like once you pass turn, uh, so many things come up. Like suddenly you remember that they played Total Audacity last turn, and you're getting a token that you're also giving them, or they play a pan down, and then they use the pan with your creature to create the two drop uh, Z card, which then gives them an extra energy to play. So now they just generated two energy out of nowhere. Uh, so the deck it, the deck was just so hard to predict when you're playing against uh, a good player. So that that just gave us like an edge uh, in taking that deck. And then of course, I'm a blue player. Uh, so it was just not my natural element. And for an event that's so like, uh, I guess high impact and, and a little bit stressful, I think it's important to play something that you're comfortable with. Uh, that way you minimize your misplays and you maximize like the innate knowledge that you already have with the color and matchup spread. So that was really important to me. Yeah. Uh, and actually for a brief time there, we, we also tested expert 21. Um, but expert just 21 just felt like if you were matched up into a really good player that also knew how the deck worked, it wasn't that clean of a fight anymore. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, we we definitely settled on and nature of evil for the for really just like the the advantage into blue green decks and then the positive matchup already into U7. What was my hardest matchup of the event? Hmm. 
Well, it's actually funny. So t leading up into the event, I thought that um, I thought Jiren was going to be the hardest matchup that I was going to have to play. So I tested, I don't know, maybe 40 games of Jiren within two days, and I had won barely 20% of them. And uh, even going into top four at nationals, I thought I was panicking about Jiren. Just like I thought I was, that was where my run was going to end. Because testing had just gone so poorly. And I, we didn't really find a true answer to the matchup. But actually, um, two days before the event or something like that, my team brought up the Red Gohanks deck. And I was too busy with work to really test with them and figure out what it does. So I showed up to the event maybe a day before and... Like, I asked them, I was like, hey, what does this deck do? Can somebody sit down with it and, and play me with it so I can kind of understand? And I just got throttled. Uh, I spent an entire dinner just getting annihilated by the deck. And I was like, oh my god, this is actually worse than Jiren. And uh, I learned a little bit on how to beat it, which helped because my second or third round of the day, I matched into a Red Gohanks player. And I just barely beat him. And then... My eighth round of the day, I matched into my teammate, DeCost, and he just annihilated me with the deck. It wasn't even close. Um, it helped that I knew what he was siding, so I, I made some uh, play actions around that. So he, he sides the red Go Han, Go Tanks, I think it is, Unison, that lets you peek at your opponent's hand for a minus two. And then rip out any multicolor card. So he does that so he can take out your Android 21 SCR. Or my Android 21 SCR. So when I saw it in my opening mulligan. I decided to just keep the 21 SCR. In hopes that I would be able to play it. Before he would find his unison. Or really just to avoid the worst case scenario. Where I search the 21 SCR. And then he just rips it out of my hand immediately afterwards. But uh, cheekily. He had no battle cards going to my turn 3. And I had no reason to play the 21 SCR. So as soon as we went into his turn three, he just slammed that unison down and ripped that 21 SCR out of my hand. And then from there, it was just so downhill. I could never really stabilize the game. All their attackers are worth a lot. And I just, I really wasn't prepared for that matchup. So that was pretty brutal. Um, uh, that definitely was the hardest match to play all day. Uh, between both Nationals and Worlds. I, I had a little hiccup playing into Cooler. Um, obviously, Patrick's really good with the deck. And I had just chosen the wrong game plan versus Cooler Game 1 of Nationals. And I really threw the Nationals title as a result. But but once once it clicked how to play against Cooler again, it it, um, it, it was a lot smoother from then out, uh, especially into the Worlds matchup. So definitely, definitely Red Gohanks, uh, piloted by my genius genius uh pilot and teammate uh robert DeCoste. but definitely the hardest matchup of the day um what other decks did i consider well we started our nationals preparation and i say we by me on on yellow go tanks if you can believe it i'd just come off of playing yellow golden frieza had just been banned uh, obviously i was initially planning to play golden frieza at nationals um, but then that got banned and I went into a frenzy looking for a yellow deck to play because I'd been playing yellow for so long at this point all, all year. Um, so I played yellow go tanks for a solid week or two. Then we realized it just wasn't, it wasn't like overbearing, you know, it was, it was a good deck and it was strong. It could, it could take wins and it went even and traded well. And it had like a cool few gimmicks that like people weren't prepared for. But it wasn't just it just wasn't dominating and and we kind of discovered that with every yellow deck that was out uh except for u7 of course like we went through we exhausted all of them we i tried yellow sin i tried uh majin vegeta i uh i even tried the the new like kid coup that plays skillless cards i was like oh this is so cool you can final flash whenever you need to uh, but it just wasn't it wasn't it so uh, I knew I wasn't going to play a black or a red deck. The tools in both of those colors don't really fit how I like to play the game. And their versatility is, it leaves a lot to be desired uh, for the colors, if that makes sense. So those were immediately off the bell. Uh, of course, I redabbled into Gobros. Uh, I do like that deck a lot, but it became quickly apparent that that deck, 
having the awaken of a draw two and then minus an energy technically was really weak. And what I mean by that is you have to spend an energy to play your Z card and then you just draw two on your awakening, right? So it's like it's even worse than your standard draw two awakening. So, so like the early game was just so weak on the deck, it just wasn't worth risking. Plus, and then if you whiffed on Healing Pod, <laughs> the game's over. Uh, so, so that wasn't worth that wasn't worth an entire Nationals run or or a uh, Worlds run. And then, um, then we really started zoning in on how we beat U7. And the only cards that like guaranteed beat the six drop from U7 are Petrification. Uh, and then the Gohan SGR from Blue. Those are the cards that like really come up, right? Uh, that are that are also versatile, right? Like of course you can splash in like Mafuba or something like that, and that that'll also beat those cards. But but once we realized that, I it was just a no-brainer for me to pick something blue, and it had to be something blue that could play the Gohan SGR. Um, the Ramp Coup deck had just gotten a new tool in the Four Drop Vegito, so. I started testing that for like two months and every testing session I would play like nine or 10 games and inevitably in those nine or 10 games, I would miss a ramped piece in the early game, uh, at least one game. And I was like, this is unacceptable. I can't play a deck that's just not going to work once every 10 games or so, right? Like, the deck is just se like severely just a worse blue deck if it doesn't get its ramp line off. Um, so I tried Expert 21. I tried... Beerus, I, uh, <laughs> uh, obviously Expert 21 couldn't play the Gohan SGR, so that, that's what really removed that from contention for me, uh, at least not in a way that was impactful to the 6 drop. Uh, I tried Soul Striker, I tried so many different things, and then finally I was like, okay, it has to be 21. I even tried Invoker, um, but Invoker just couldn't beat Green Gohan. I nearly played it for Worlds after I I'd got my invite to Worlds. Um, but I was just like, there is no way for this deck to stick a win con into Green Gohan. Um, so it just wasn't worth it. Ironically, I didn't even play a Green Gohan in, in my Worlds run, but it it uh, it just wasn't worth the risk. But yeah, I think the, the deck that came closest to being my second pick for Nationals was um, actually 7 Coup. Uh, we spent so much time on the deck, and it just felt so strong except for the, the one or two games that you would miss an opener, and then the deck just wasn't worth it. Oh, what do I look forward to in Beyond Generations? Well, I actually have a habit of not looking at any new cards until they're printed and in my hand. I don't test any new cards. I don't test any new sets. I don't proxy. I don't I do not do any of it. And, it. and it's just been like a tradition for me, or I guess a habit. Um, it definitely costs me when a new set comes out and, and my competitors have an edge on me. But so so in saying that, I don't actually know what's coming out in Beyond Generations. But what I am looking forward to when that set drops is being able to try new decks. And uh, coming, com, com, kind of like coming down from the Nationals and World stress of like, only playing the hyper competitive decks you know what i'm saying like like for the last few months i feel like i've only played like like what people would call like the sweaty decks or something like that but um things that things that really i only thought would have a chance of winning winning worlds or nats so i'm excited to go back to playing stuff that, that that's like really casual or has like cool gimmicks to it like cool combo decks even that new like tricolors and masu deck i'm really looking forward to trying so so that's what i'm really looking forward to in uh, beyond generations what's my favorite dbs card okay well this one's actually uh, an easy one for me and uh i don't know how many people would guess it but it's actually not a character because I actually don't really care for the characters in Dragon Ball. Uh, I don't know if that's like uh, taboo to say, but they're all just like really muscly men uh, <laughs> that like scream a lot, right? Like so. Uh, but my favorite character or favorite card in DBS uh, is the Tournament of Power Arena. That card is so simple in the art, and it's just beautiful into this like dark background. The original too, not the golden one. The original with like just sitting in space. And then the effect of it is so fun to me. Like, um, it, 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 I mean, it mimics, mimics one of my favorite cards from Magic the Gathering. So, um, that for sure is my favorite card in Dragon Ball Super. Yeah, I definitely have final shoutouts. So, um, I don't know when this video is going to be released, but 
this is going to be my final year with uh, Foe XPPG. It has been an absolute blast playing with Foe XPPG. Um, and I owe everything I've learned as a player to this point to that team and that group of guys that, that I've played with. So definitely shout out to Foe PPG. Shout out to Eddie St. Hilaire. Uh, that man and I will still be great friends. Uh, and he just takes care of his people. And I think that is what makes Foe XPPG such a great team. But so shout outs to them. Um, shout outs to, of course, all the people that I've met along the way to get to this point in my life. And that's like not an over exaggeration. I really enjoy every conversation I've had with anybody I've met through this game, whether it's like a discussion or disagreement about how something works. I think disagreements and discussions are just ways to learn new things. And so every time somebody brings up a new idea to me, or brings up their deck and just asks me to look through it for them and like what I think or what what they could do better. I think that's just so cool. And that's like something you only get out of card games. Um, so shout out to all of you guys that have made this journey so fun and that have made this so much more worth playing, right? Like, and finally, definitely last but not least, shout out to my friends uh, from home, from Miami, uh, from Fort Walton Beach. Shout out to you guys for putting up with me and always wanted to play card games like 24 seven. It doesn't even have to be DVSCG. I will literally pick up a stack of 52 cards and just want to play something with them with my friends all the time. So thanks guys. Well, I hope you guys enjoy our questionnaire with the new world champion legends, Carrick. He's um he's a great guy. I always enjoy engaging with him over the years in the world of dragon ball. And um, I wish him the best for everything, but what are you guys thoughts on this? Did y'all enjoy the questions? Did y'all expect Android 21 to get first place despite all the Yellow U7 coming out? Let me know in the comments. Now, yeah, Yellow U7 was played for sure. It was definitely played. Did y'all expect an older leader to dominate the scene at Worlds? I want to know. Let me know in the comments. It's important. Also, subscribe. And I'm going to hold you guys up. I'm MU7. Have a great day. And remember, the Lord loves you. Bye. Oh, and this bitch going crazy.